In this video, I'd like to talk about finite geometric series word problems. So when dealing with these finite geometric series, it's useful to have the formula handy, especially when dealing with word problems, since those can be a little bit challenging. So let me just make a little bit of room and let's write down the formula. So let's say the sum of our finite geometric series is S, then the formula is equal to A, which is the starting value, multiplied by one minus R, which is the common ratio, raised to the nth power, which is the number of terms, all divided by one minus R. So let's write down what each of these letters mean just as a reminder. So S, that is the sum of the, we could say the series, and A, like I mentioned, that is just our starting amount, the value that we start at. R is the common ratio, that's the number we multiply by to go from one term to the next in the series. And N is just the number of terms in the series. So now that we understand the basic idea of this formula, let's jump in and try to solve some of these problems. So a monkey is swinging from a tree. On the first swing, she passes through an arc of 20 meters. So that's our starting value, A. With each swing, she passes through an arc four-fifths the length of the previous swing. So this four-fifths, that is our common ratio. Going from one swing to the next, we will multiply by four-fifths. What is the total distance the monkey has traveled when she completes her tenth swing? So that's our n value. That's the number of swings that the monkey, monkey will take or the number of terms in the geometric series. So let's just write this down and get an idea of what it actually looks like before we just plug in the values. So our sum here. Well, the monkey starts with a swing of 20 meters. And then after that, each swing will be four fifths the previous swing. So if 20 was the first swing, then the second swing will be 20 multiplied by four fifths. The third swing will be 20 multiplied by four fifths twice, or essentially we're taking the previous term here and multiplying again by four fifths. So we're gonna get 20 multiplied by four fifths squared and so on, all the way up to the 10th swing, which will be 20 multiplied by four fifths to the ninth power. Now you might think this would be the 10th power, but it is in fact the ninth power because remember this is our first swing. So this is our n value, one, two, three, and all the way up to 10. So notice that for whatever swing the monkey is on, the exponent for four fifths is always one less than whatever the term value is. So here it's to the first power and that's at term number two. And you could think this is really 20 times four fifths to the zero power if you want, since anything to the zero power is one. But regardless, the exponent is always one less than the term value. So that's why this is a nine rather than a 10. So you could add this up by hand by plugging it into a calculator, which can be very tedious, or we can use this formula. So let's just write down what we know for the formula. We know that our starting value is 20. We know our common ratio is four fifths. And we also know our term numbers. So N, that is 10. There are 10 different swings here. So our sum, if we just plug everything in, it will be 20 multiplied by one minus four fifths, all raised to the 10th power. And then that's divided by one minus four fifths. So when we actually evaluate this, we're gonna get a decimal answer and we need to round it to the nearest meter. So it's helpful to have a good calculator for this since we gotta raise four fifths to the 10th power. So if we did this by hand, we would need to know four to the 10th power and then divide it by five to the 10th power. So it is possible to do this by hand, but that can be a little bit complicated. 
So after plugging this into our calculator, we would get 89.2625, and we don't really need the rest of the decimals, so really it's approximately this, and that's in meters. But we need to round to the nearest meter. So this is approximately 89 meters. So that's what we put in our box here. And if you do want a way to check this, you can just add up this finite geometric sum by hand or term by term in the calculator.